outside responsibility. He's got help on the inside. He's where he should be. Well, that ball was thrown perfectly as Miano steps into the picture, but that ball was thrown perfectly. What a nice little hesitation move there by Conway, Frank. He gave a little stutter step that froze Otis Smith, and then when the shifting appears, he moves past it. Kevin Butler tacks on the point after, and it's 37. Little redemption here. Well, the Bears get on the board. You know, Dan, you were mentioning uh, strange to see Ohio State receivers and all that. Steve Hurd came up with an amazing note today with Eric Kramer throwing that touchdown pass. He's only the second North Carolina State quarterback to ever throw a pass in the NFL. Now, NC State's had some pretty good teams through the years. The other guy was Roman Gabriel, but no other quarterback beside those two. And Gabriel played for so many of his years right here with the Eagles. Yep. Mainly with the Rams partially here. I'm glad to see you guys do it to another school other than Michigan. <laughs> uh, last time you guys sprung a stat on me like that, it was about Michigan. Wait till we come back. <laughs> Bridge, good night for his unit. And uh, savoring the moment because he's going to take care of his ex-teammates here. Interesting again, we, the people we said earlier, which Cotide says it's the best defensive unit I've had since I've been here. They've, they've had some good ones. 30 to 7, Philadelphia. And they can chew up some of the clock here from the 29 yard line as they begin this drive. And Cunningham gives it to Herschel. And he bangs his way out for a gain of about eight. Well, they're getting a few balls tonight, Al. He only carried the ball seven times. He has. And that loss to the Giants. You know, I was thinking that the, the new rules that have been put in, the league has to be thrilled with what's taking place. A lot more scoring, more yardage, the uh, kickoff move back, better field position, the five-yard rule being enforced uh, against the defensive backs, and scoring is up. Normally, you, you don't want to make a knee-jerk reaction to a rules change. You say, you know, give me half a season, give me something to see whether or not it's really making a difference. But this is so apparent. Uh, thumbs up to the league for these rule changes. I think yep. they have added a great deal to the game. Second down and two at the 37. James Joseph picks up the first down. One of the rules that I love, and I love the two-point rule, we haven't seen it come into play in either of our games. Funny thing, though, we, we talk to coaches as we go around, and there's a comparison of the first 27 games last year and this, so we don't include the, the Monday night game in week two of each season, but points are up, TD's way up, and uh, almost 2,000 more yards have been uh, compiled. And how about people like Andre Rice? 26 yeah. receptions, first two games, Jerry Rice cracking the record on a week ago. And I'll tell you that rule that they are enforcing has been there for years now on the defensive backs where they can't drop up that receiver downfield is really going to make some different numbers of receiver. Here's Walker for about five. The two-point thing, we asked Dave Wanstead last night, if it's the end of the game, do you try to win it with two, tie with one? And he told us, I don't send it into overtime. I go for two. I talked to Richie Kotai before the game. Richie said the opposite thing. The funny thing was, I think a lot of fans might wonder, what would the 49ers have done yesterday had they scored down by seven toward the end of that game with Kansas City? Well, we talked to George Seifert last week, and he made it very clear, I don't send it into overtime, I go for two, and that's what they would have done. With his offensive team, I can't think of a better offensive team in the National Football League to go for two with than the 49er offense. With all the weapons they have, plus the mobility of Steve Young, Hey, if, I, if I'm running the 49ers, I'm not so sure I don't go for two on every single play from the two-yard line. It still hasn't absorbed, been absorbed totally by the fans that, that this is from two yards, not from three yards, as it is in college. You know, we also, in talking, it's, it's true love is something really special. <laughs> when, you, when you look at the two-point conversion, and the effect that it's going to have here during the course of this season. Again, don't get fixated on it being the last play of the game. It comes into play throughout a game's entirety as far as strategy down the road. It's, it comes into play on the first score of the game. Randall on a third and one sneak for a first to the 46. And then I think it also, at the end of a game, has a lot to do whether you're at home or on the road. Mm -hmm. I think a coach is more at ease sending it into overtime if he's at home. If he's on the road, 
we've had a lot of coaches out like you brought it up have told us you know what that that's my best shot at winning the ball game on the road in a hostile environment to take my crack at it at the end of the game there it is so far three out of four successful on the ground but just five of 14 through the air 44 percent overall successful thus far keep in mind it's only two yards that's why you see it a, high, a higher conversion rate on the ground. Two yards isn't that far to go. James Joseph picks up a couple. 30 to 7. The Eagles on top with 8 10 remaining. Another thing for the Eagles offensive unit, uh, they should be getting Charlie Garner back, the second round draft pick. A fine running back. He looked so good in training camp. He's been injured. He'll be back in a few weeks. Really a free kick. Yeah, broke a rib, running a cut. Nobody even hit it. He was just making a move and broke a rib. James Joseph takes the ball to the 42-yard line as they chew up the clock. Sean Gale makes the tackle. The Goodyear blimp, stars and stripes, providing the scenics on a gorgeous late summer night. Philadelphia temperature in the upper 60s at the moment. Well, with the Eagles looking pretty solid here tonight, the Giants at 2 0, the Dallas Cowboys at 2 0, and the Washington Redskins even won last week to get the 1 and 1. I think it's safe to say that the uh, the NFC East is not uh, not ready to be declared dead yet as far as the dominant conference in this group. Joseph, like a pinball, gets knocked down back at the 44 by their top draft choice, John Theory. John Theory, the reason that Richard Dent is no longer a member of the Chicago Bears. Richard Dent's contract was still very much in limbo and in play with the Bears, but then on draft day, Theory is available. The Bears loved him. They took him, and immediately upon drafting Theory, informed Richard Dent that he no longer fits in the Bears' future. And Dent goes to the 49ers and unfortunately gets hurt yesterday. Uh, supposedly is going to have knee surgeries, a scope, and be out four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Mitch Berger to punt. Fair catch is pulled for. And John Waddle dropped it and recovers it at the 14 yard line. So the Bears will have it there. 6.09 left in the fourth. It is 30 to 7, Philly. 90 in the crowd tonight at the vet. First down for Chicago with the 15. Kramer tipped and Waddle can't hold on. It was tipped over the middle. Waddle <laughs> hasn't played much of a role tonight, but through the years he's been talked about as a blue collar guy and underappreciated and undersized. And I said to him before the game tonight, I said, Do you have any new adjectives we can use about you? He said, Yeah, slow. <laughs> That's new. Mike yeah. <laughs> Nitzke loved this, loved this guy. Even though they cut him two or three times, kept bringing him back. Led the Bears in receiving last year, but only 44 receptions. Such was their inept offense. Second and ten. Kramer going deep, and the catch is made by Conway, who is off to the races. And Conway with a touchdown. Well, we talked about the Bears. Could they build on something that happens here in the fourth quarter? And a pair of Curtis Conway touchdowns look like a pretty good place to start. Took it away from one of the best in the business, Eric Allen. Eric Allen made a play on it. Good concentration by Conway. The second year, first round draft pick out of USC. Eric makes a play on it, and then no way that Jackson's going to catch him. No, just man coverage all the way, though, with Eric Allen. He just drifted too far to the outside and appeared to misjudge the, the fact that the ball was coming back more to the inside. And Might not have been that respectful either. I mean, he was playing that kind of casually. Two-point conversion attempt coming up here because the score is 30 to 13. Kramer will try to make it a 15-point differential. 
seeks the deuce, gets it over the middle, catch is made there. Conway accounts for all eight points. And we had put up a graphic before the Bears had gone 61 quarters without scoring two TDs in a quarter. That's over 15 games. Yep. But a pair here, and it's 30 to 15. All right, Curtis. Jerry Kramer, first of all, tough it is to see. And right there, he gets whacked right on the helmet by Andy Harmon. And he looks like he got a finger right in the eye. Eric Kramer came away with a hand over his eye. And here goes an onside. Well, at least they're setting up for an onside kick attempt. Gardaki sends it down. It's got to go 10 yards. It takes a nice hop, the kind you want. And the Eagles haven't covered it yet. Looks like the Eagles had it yeah. two separate times. Yeah. And they do have it. Yeah, they, they've got it. Even, even though Calvin Williams was signaling in the other direction. He was saying, we've got it, but he was signaling in the Bears' direction. Was, <laughs> took the page out of Jim Marshall's playbook. Yeah. That ball, that's all you ask for is an onside kick for the ball to be in play and have a legitimate shot at it. Good job, though, by Philadelphia covering it up. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by your Cadillac dealers creating a higher standard. Lay's potato chips that you can't eat just one. Castrol GTX engineered for greater protection against breakdown. And AT&T to help put your world within reach. The vet, Philly has the ball. 30 to 15 is the score. Conway, two touchdowns tonight, equaling his output for all of last year. Well, it sounds ridiculous with the size of the lead that the Eagles had, but it's a doggone good thing that they covered that onside kick. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bears uh, were only two touchdowns from either tying or winning the ball game with almost six minutes left if they would have recovered that onside kick. Speaking of a covering, uh, Conway's can't. Well, never mind. You're incorrigible. That's all I can find. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you gotta the buzz our friends out there. With the Bears coming up again, what, October? It's Green Bay. Eagles, we'll see you a little later on against the Houston Oilers. As we get to know the Oilers. That spread offense of theirs. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> Too bad. Second and five at the 42 yard line. Herschel. 41 yard line. Time of the game where you're covering up the football and uh, Herschel, who does a good job of that anyway. He's put a couple on the ground tonight, but he's pretty safe with the football. Bears take a timeout to conserve some clock here, five minutes remaining in the game. And they've got about 200 uh, young folks here tonight, and they are part of what's known as AmeriCorps, the new national service program, and there they are. These are Philadelphians, along with thousands of others from around the country, were sworn into service today at the several events around the country. Tomorrow, we'll be in classrooms or walking police beach, earning money to help pay for college. It's a, a program that Jeffrey Lurie, uh, the owner of the Eagles, enjoying uh, his debut as, a, uh, as an owner in the home game, very much a part of. Not in the foreseeable future, I don't think. Third down and four at the 41. The Eagles stay here. They'll meet the Green Bay Packers, who were beaten yesterday by Miami on Sunday. And the Bears will go home. The Bears will be facing the Minnesota Vikings who knocked off Detroit. Third and four at the 41. Walker gets down at the 41 yard line. So. Chicago takes another timeout. They'll conserve a little clock here. The fans that still remain uh, do not agree with the Chicotite on that call. Well, a little vocal about it. They'll send it down in the air. You know, the, the Bears go home. They've had some problems at Soldier Field because of uh, the overuse. They had a Grateful Dead concert. They had some college games that preceded their home opener. Let's see a segue into this. Yeah, right. We update you on some injuries. Uh, Dan talked about Dent with a torn knee ligament, possible surgery. Anthony Carter of the Lions, we would have seen him next week. He's out for six to eight weeks, broken collarbone. We talked about Hampton before, Rodney with a bruised kidney, so he's out for 
two to three weeks for the unbeaten Giants. And Eric Moore of the Bengals suffered a broken leg yesterday, and he is out for a month to six weeks. Obviously, the non-weight-bearing bone for Eric Moore to only be out four to six. The Eagles now 